Well, good morning and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're not going to make anything, but we're going to look at how to have fun in the kitchen. Now, some of you probably are already the kind that uh, are willing to take a chance and step out and try something different, but some of you may be a little shy on varying recipes or taking a chance. So I could think of a song to sing today. The closest I could come was uh, the old ABBA song, Take a Chance on Me, but the lyrics didn't really fit the situation. So what we're going to do today is take a look at four of my recipes and ways that you can vary them. In other words, substitute an ingredient for something else. So let's have a close look at these recipes and see what we can do, shall we? All right, so here we have our first recipe. It's uh, chocolate chip crunch cookies. Now this recipe is already a variation from a different recipe. And where it varies is here, it says two cups of crushed corn flakes. Crush them by hand. Well, originally in the original recipe, that was two cups of oatmeal, of quick oats. So what happened was the lady who made this recipe originally was putting cookies together and discovered she didn't have oatmeal but she had lots of cornflakes, so she is substituted. So there you go, you can take this recipe and substitute oatmeal back for the cornflakes. That's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do to vary your flavor is instead of two teaspoons of vanilla, you could try a different flavoring. The sugar and brown sugar, well, you could keep the white sugar and substitute uh, maple syrup or uh, honey for the brown sugar try that. So a few things you can do there. The bottom here it says one to two cups of chocolate chips. Well of course there's very many different flavors of chips you can buy. There's chocolate mint, there's uh, butterscotch, uh, I'm not sure what all is out there, white chocolate. So you could change up those and put in uh, one to two cups of something else. Or you could even be brave and try putting in say blueberries or uh, little bits of cubed apple. So again, you can change up the recipe and come up with a very different cookie, but just as delicious. Let's have a look at our next recipe. Okay, this one is for lemon yogurt cookies. Well, this one I vary all the time. This one calls basically for a half cup of low-fat lemon yogurt. Quite often I'll substitute blueberry yogurt for this, and instead of the lemon zest here, where it calls for a half a teaspoon of lemon zest, I'll substitute blueberries. So you can do that. So you, can just, you probably put more than half a teaspoon of blueberries, so more like maybe a half a cup. But there again, you can change that up and use blueberries in yogurt or a raspberry yogurt or a different flavor of yogurt instead of the lemon yogurt. And then, of course, you'll have a different flavor cookie. Simple substitution, very drastic change in the thing. Here we have easy oatmeal banana cookies. It calls for two cups of quick oats. Well, try a crushed cereal of some sort. Like I mentioned before, you could use cornflakes, crush up some Cheerios. Pick your favorite flavor of Cheerios and do that. Or, you know, whatever you want. Uh, try shredded wheat. Try mini wheats or take your pick. But substitute some kind of other cereal for your oats there. Pureed bananas. Well, you could try using applesauce. Now, if you use applesauce, you might want to squeeze a little bit of the juice out of it because it is more uh, moist than pureed bananas would be. But you can substitute something else for the bananas. Chopped nuts, optional. Well, again, what kind of nuts do you want to use? Pecans, walnuts, macadamia nuts, chopped up almonds, slivered almonds. Take your pick. Chocolate chips, again, try something different. Use raisins. This calls for a cup of raisins down here, so maybe you want to use a different flavor of chips, or some blueberries, or some raspberries, or just something different. Also down here it says, you know, here's right here, it gives you your choices. Chips, uh, chocolate chips, raisins, dried cranberries, etc. You can, you can change that up quite easily. Same basic recipe, but different result. Now here's something on the savory end. This is slow cooker white chicken chili. Calls for two medium chicken breasts. Well, why don't you try using pork chops? Two pork chops. Cubed. 
calls for an 18 ounce can of great northern beans or white beans. Well, you could use kidney beans. You could use any kind of canned beans other than green beans. Medium white onion, try a red onion. Different flavor. Garlic, uh, chicken broth, well, you could try, if you're using pork, maybe you might want to try a beef broth instead. Green chilies, you can use that. Uh, white pepper, the rest is you know, pretty much the same. You could change the oregano for something else or use Italian seasoning or Greek seasoning. But see what I'm trying to get at is you don't have to really go far to change up a recipe and come up with a different result. So I'm encouraging you to be brave in the kitchen. Step a little over the line, change up a recipe and see what you get. You can invent a whole new cookie or a whole new casserole or who knows, just by simply changing up one ingredient or several. Here's one for you. If you have a good peanut butter cookie recipe, try using Nutella or a hazelnut spread instead of peanut butter. Oh man, they make really good cookies. You can even add some chopped up hazelnuts in there or some slivered almonds. But don't be afraid to try new things. Worst case scenario, you're going to be feeding the birds or the, the neighbor's dog. But uh, don't be afraid to try new things in the kitchen. That's where new recipes come from. So I hope you've enjoyed today's little recipe challenge, so to speak. And actually, here's my challenge to you. Pick one of your favorite recipes and change up an ingredient or two and tell me about it in the comments. Enjoy cooking. Make it fun. Don't be afraid of it. Don't tell me you burn water. If you burn water, your problem is you're not paying attention to what you're doing. You're distracted. You're going off and doing other things. People who burn things in the oven, it's usually because they put things in the oven and then forget about them. Set a timer. You got a cell phone? Set the timer on your cell phone. Carry it with you so when it goes off, you know you got to get whatever it is you're baking out of the oven. If you have things on the stovetop, you shouldn't be walking off leaving them on anyway. So it's a matter of paying attention to what you're doing and not allowing yourself to be distracted by other things while you're baking or cooking. So don't tell me you burn water. Don't believe it for a minute. You may be negligent, you may be forgetful, you may be easily distracted, but anyone can cook if you follow the recipe, pay attention to what you're doing, and like I say, don't allow yourself to be distracted by other things. Here's what can happen if you get distracted. Father O'Malley went to visit one of his elderly parishioners. Mabel let him in, and she showed him to her living room and invited him to have a seat. And she said, I'll just go fix us some tea and some cookies. So she went off to the kitchen while the phone rang and she answered. So Father O'Malley is sitting in the living room and he can hear Mabel talking on the phone. And as he's sitting there, he notices a bowl of peanuts on the coffee table. Well, he resists, resists the temptation for as long as he can. And finally, he can't take it anymore. So he picks up a couple of peanuts and eats them. Well, by the time Mabel gets off the phone, makes the tea and cookies and brings it into the living room, he's almost consumed the entire bowl. He comes in and sets a tray of tea goods down on the coffee table and he looks at her and says, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, I must apologize. And she said, oh, well, what, what's wrong, Father? He says, well, while you were in the kitchen and uh, doing the things that you were doing, I gave into temptation and I started eating the peanuts in the bowl on the table and I'm afraid I've almost eaten all of them. She goes, oh, no problem at all, Father, no problem at all. I had no idea what to do with them after I sucked the chocolate off. Mmm. <laughs> so poor Father O'Malley suffered from giving into his temptation, and uh, Martha let it happen by allowing herself to be distracted by other things. So there you go. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. Hope you'll try some experimenting in the kitchen. And even if it's just something that's not quite so brave as substituting a hazelnut spread for your peanut butter in your peanut butter cookie recipe. But until Tuesday with Tuesdays with the Pilgrim and next Friday when we'll have a story time, take care, stay safe, and God bless.